everyone, today we are looking at lead code number 118. It's a question called Pascal's Triangle. It's a classic lead code problem. I know it says easy, but if you've never seen this problem before, it does trip up people. So don't feel bad if you had, if you had trouble with it or anything like that. It is a tricky one if you haven't seen it before. Um, it is a good question to know because it it runs on a lot of um, foundational patterns that you're going to see in a lot of other types of problems and that is a, a dynamic pattern dynamic programming pattern called tabulation and the idea is is that we want to fill out a table with initial values and from those initial values we have the information we need to fill out the rest of the table and that's exactly what's happening here in Pascal's triangle if you notice here we have a grid or a triangle it's an array of arrays and we can see that all the values on the left so the first element in every single uh, row in this array you can see that it's one we have a one here one here one here and so forth and same thing on the the right side every value on the right is also a one so the values in between are sandwiched between ones now, based on that information, we can calculate all the values in between. Just by, and you have this nice animation that kind of shows it here, if we add these two numbers together, we get this two. We add these two numbers here together, we get this three, this three right here. This three plus one will give us four, three plus three will give us six, and so forth and so on, okay? And so uh, once we kind of understand that, it's, it's not too difficult to solve. There are some little bit of tricky parts in it, but um, it's not too bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear this out. Let me, let me just have us a nice fresh board that we're working with. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm going to just go ahead and change the color here to a darker one. Okay, so now let's say our input is 5. Okay, so we have a uh, input which equals five. And so what we wanna do is we, we know we're gonna have an array of arrays, so we can go ahead and create our array. We can set the initial value, which is just gonna be a one. And from this one, can we figure out, can we build the rest of the triangle just from that initial value? So if we have an array, this will be the end of the array. And then from there, can we fill in the rest of them? Well, yes, we can. Let's say we have the, we store this this uh, uh, value right here, this one into a variable, and we'll call it previous row, okay? And then what we can do is we can create a second array, push in a one because we know that first value will always be a one, and then iterate over the previous row and fill in the rest of them. Here we wouldn't have to because it's just going to be the first and the last. But when we get to uh, the third element, we can see how this, this method will be effective. So let's say this is, this is our prev row saved in a variable, right? And now we're gonna have our new row, our current row. Let's call this our cur row. And we know the first element is gonna be a one, okay? And now we can create a jth index. So we'll create a j here, and we'll start it at the first element, at the index of one. And we know that from the previous, what is the previous? Well, it's going to be the first two adjacent ones. So it's gonna be the jth index plus the jth uh, minus one. So the jth index is one. Let's set this here, j is one. And then j minus one is going to be zero. And so over here, we can see that the, the jth index is one and the jth minus one is zero, uh, is the index is zero, which the value is one. And if we add those together, we're gonna get a two, okay? And now we don't have to do anything. We can break out of this loop and then we push on a one at the end because we know the first value is gonna be one and the last value is gonna be one. Okay, let's go to the third one. We'll do one more example here. Let me erase this j out of here okay let's do that okay why are we not erasing okay 
There we go. Okay, so now we're going to come here and we're going to have a new array, a new current row. So we'll go ahead and um, we'll set this current row here. Okay, having some issues here with that. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set this current row. We're going to set this new new array to current row. And what do we want to do? First thing we want to do is push in that 1. And then we want to set j over here to 1. And we want to find the, the jth index, which is 1, and j minus 1, which is 0. So um, we're going to basically add this 2 and this one right over here okay and that's going to give us uh, three okay same thing then we're gonna increment J so let's go ahead and do that we increment J here and now J is 0 1 2 and so J is 2 J minus 1 is 1 and so we can see 0, 1, 2 is 1, plus 2 is 2, so this is 3. We break out of the loop, and then we go ahead and push on a 1 on the end of it, okay? And we just go all the way up to the end, the end, the end of our input there. Okay, so let's go ahead and code this out. Okay, so first we're going to check is our base cases. So if, if num rows is less than uh, 1, that means we have nothing there, then we can just go ahead and return an empty array. Okay, if num rows is 1, then we can just go ahead and return uh, just that first, that first element in our triangle. Okay, so we can go ahead and create our triangle. And we can set this to an array inside of array with the value of one. Okay, and so now we have our, uh, our triangle and now we just create our loops. So we can do for let i equal one, i is less than num rows, i plus plus. Okay, and so now what we wanna do is we wanna have access to our previous row because remember, we're over here on our previous row. That's how we're base we're using that information to generate the current row. So we can set um, let prev row equal triangle of i minus one. Okay, and then we want our current row. Cur row to be, we can just set it initially to an empty array, and then we can push on a one, okay? So we can do cur row dot push one, okay? And now we wanna iterate over our current row and use the previous row to calculate the values, okay? So we can do for let j equals one, j is less than prev row dot length j plus plus okay and so now here what we want to do is we can say cur row at index j is going to equal prev row at j plus prev row at j minus one Okay, and then when we break out of this, we want to go ahead and push a one on the end of our cur row. One, and then we want to go ahead and take our current row and push, push it into our triangle, update our triangle. Cur row, and then we just go ahead and return our triangle. Okay, and that's it. Okay. We can see that we have pretty good runtime. We have 76, 74% uh, faster than most JavaScript solutions. 
and um, space time is not too bad 25% faster than most most solutions um, so that is Pascal's triangle leap code number 118 hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one